Hello everyone, I am Jatin Bhadwaj and I am going to discuss two important questions from the GS paper 1 history section. The history section this year had six questions out of which two have been taken right from the 15 marker and from the 10 marker. The first question is the question number third from the paper which says that bring out the socio-economic effects of the introduction of railway in different countries of the world. Now the moment you see world, it seems that it is a world history question. No doubt it is. But understanding each and every country and the development of railway over those countries seems to be impossible. Then how to deal with this question? Here you can take some of the examples from the countries which you might have heard about or might have read about, which include the Industrial Revolution of England, the American Revolution, the history of South Africa, and of course India itself. So the introduction of India, so the introduction of Indian railways and its socio-economic impact could be a guideline for you to answer this question. Now, this question can easily be answered using three different methods. The first one is that you can divide your answer into socio and economic separately. The second could be that you can answer this question based on the negative and the positive effects of railway on these important countries. So you can write with positive and negative effect. The third way is to answer this question from the perspective of how this helped or how the railway affected or impacted the developed or the colonizer country and the colonized country. So it could be between the colonizer and the colonized country. Now, in order to make this answer easy and comprehensive, let's discuss from the perspective of positive and negative effects. Now, the positive effects for this is that for the first time, the introduction of railway helped in the movement of goods and people. The railway connected the hinterland, that is the deeper regions of a particular nation, to the coastal region. And through that, they were able to transport the raw material as well as the finished goods and in some cases, raw material from inside to outside and the finished material from the outside to inside with an ease. The movement of people also helped for the national unification. People were easily transported from one place to the other and from one region to the other. The second important reason is that it helped in the national unity. Now take for example, Indian National Congress conducted the annual sessions across Indian territories. Different cities were part of those discussions. Now how these people were able to move from one place to the other? Railways was an important reason. In fact, Mahatma Gandhi himself took the All India Tour using the same railways. So people got to know each other. They were more understandable, they were more comprehensive, the Indian society. The next reason is that it called for the social inclusion. Now, across the world, those sections of the society which were not easily be part of the society, which were not accepted by the society as a whole, got a chance to be traveling together with those people in the railways. For example, as far as blacks are concerned, so black got a chance to travel in the railways. As far as women are concerned, so they got more liberation from the railways in the European countries. In India itself, in South Asia itself, Dalits, backwards, they got a chance to travel in the railway. And through this social, social or a composite traveling together brought a kind of a social inclusion and better understanding in the society. And the last one is that it has promoted the concept of urbanization. Now, across the railway track, cities were grown. These cities helped in the development of urbanization. Modern societies were developed. Modern ways of working developed. Industrial towns were set up across the nation. The best example here could be the US and the Japan. So the development of railway in US and Japan helped in the development of urbanization to a larger extent. Now, all these points seem to be the positive one. Let's talk about the negative effect of the introduction of railways across the countries.
here the first one is that the development of railway has called for the drain of wealth now this is something which was used by a moderate leader dada bhai naroji and because of this he says that the purpose for which they you know railways was created was not actually to benefit india or benefit any other colonized country the benefit was to provide all support to the foreign traders foreign traders were able to export the raw material easily exploit the natural resources and they were able to import the finished goods from their home country easily that's how there was a drain of wealth now this also further led to the concept of deindustrialization now this deindustrialization has called for the death of traditional industries because railways supported some specific sectors like coal iron steel and others and they have largely neglected the other traditional sectors example the agriculture even in agriculture only cotton was the most important good that was the prime focus of the colonizers the second important thing is it led to the over exploitation of natural resources now since the transportation became easy it started exploiting more and more resources especially in the tribal region so they try to intervene in the tribal region in order to make things more easier for them and because of that there was regular conflicts between the colonizers and the tribals not only that the over exploitation of the resources especially in the forest resources because they used to make wood as a part of development of their bogies furniture inside the railways so they started over exploiting their natural resources the sec the next one could be the rise of capitalism and poverty now the basic objective of the railways was not to provide benefits to the locals they supported their own colonizers objective and when they did that ultimately they ended up hurting the local industries and local economy the outsiders were preferred over the insiders there was a rise of poverty as a consequence of this there was a lack of employment generation so the purpose of railway actually was the impact of expanding the colonial rule and benefit the commercialization rather than the development and the last one is that it led to the expansion of their own interest in terms of the security so it has provided the overall security purpose to these colonizing country i am just giving you two such examples for example in 1857 mutiny through this railway they were easily be able to transport the soldiers and the weapons from one region to the other the same happens in the european countries as well when during the world war 1 and 2 railway helped in the transportation of men and material to meet their interest and through this the colonizing countries were able to maintain their roots in those territories now the same could easily be done as you can see from the answer itself that richard trevithick invented the steam engine based railways now don't get confused with this james watt because we are talking about railways and not just the steam engine so richard trevithick invented the railway started in england and later on with the industrial revolution and colonialism railway expanded both advanced and colonized countries so this is how you can basically start with a background now starting an answer in history through the background is one of the best solution that you can have now from there the advent of the railway not just revolutionized now from there the advent of the railways not just revolutionized the transport system but also had complex socio economic effects and then you can start with those socio economic effects the one that we have tried was the positive and the negatives so it facilitated the quick movement of the people and the good leading to the increased trade and economic development it promoted urbanization for example in japan and europe it promoted the social inclusion where the people from different races and the background such as dalit women and others were able to participate in the overall transportation and the communication and it promoted the national unification for example mahatma gandhi took a national tour for that purpose now these were the positive impacts 
let's talk about the negative one in terms of negative impact it first contributed towards the drain of wealth as propounded by dada bhai naroji it deindustrialized the local economies and colonized countries where the exports of the finished goods and the import of the raw material by the colonized power by the colonized power not by the colonizers not by the colonies themselves the deployment of the soldiers and the arms became easier during the revolts and the wars as we have discussed the sepoy mutiny and the world war building of the railways further led to the over exploitation of the resources especially in the tribal regions so this was the another negative impact khasi could be the one such the finances of the building railways enriched the capitalist class because england the most powerful and the had the largest empire was a capitalist country so it increased the capitalist interest and further led to the improvised colonized country now through this you can easily explain to the examiner that this is how socio economic impact was seen by the railway introduction across the world in the conclusion you can say that despite the negative impact now writing a conclusion in the positive note seems to be a good idea now despite having a negative impact railways had remained the most obvious means of national connectivity and a catalyst towards the socio economic development in india and beyond so we have covered indian history as well as the world history from that perspective in this answer thank you